Hi, Dawn Stensland Menti Hill here. Welcome to the Dawn Show. We are live and we are local. Today, hope, faith, and forgiveness and taking control of your destiny. We can learn a whole lot from Amy and Matt Baumgartner. Uh, Amy, by the way, is the author of uh, an author, a co author, I should say, mm -hmm. an own ambassador and CYL Control Your Life contributor for that magazine. So, welcome to the Dawn Show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. So, um, for people who've not heard your story before, uh, you have a wonderful journey and a great story to share that has a happy ending, but it, it didn't start that way. It didn't. Um, about four years ago, a little less than four years ago, I was involved in a drunk driving accident uh, where our daughter, our five-year-old daughter at the time, was severely injured. She had a level four lacerated liver. Leading up to that accident, I had started on a path of drinking um, during the day, at night, whenever. Um, and I really lost control of my life and I lost control of our marriage. During that time, I wasn't being honest with myself and what was going on in our marriage and, and my life. And I was using alcohol to kind of um, numb myself and get rid of all the pain that I, that I felt. And that was the wake up call that I needed. And sometimes, you know, that's, that happens in life. That you well, and I want to back up for a second because people might say, when you say the word alcohol, but I know so many people who have their it, whatever right. it is, whether they have prescription meds, right. whether they're addicted to the internet, whether they're addicted to their job. Uh, there are a lot of different things that, that you can be dealing with that, that are the cause of you a person losing that control. Well, I mean, take al take the word alcohol out of it and substitute that with any word, work, chocolate, food, sex, whatever. Um, it's whatever it's taking you away from, from, what you, from your responsibilities. And I was neglecting my responsibilities as a wife, as a mother, as an employee, and I was using alcohol to kind of substitute that pain. And that's it, whatever it is. You can use work to substitute. You can use, like I said, food to substitute. And, you know, Eckhart Tolle says there's something in everybody that longs for that awakening to be more true to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I love that because I absolutely believe that the accident was my awakening to be more true to myself and get our marriage back on track and, and, and on a path that's going to be beneficial to ourselves, to our children, because who are we hurting when we have that it? in our lives. Right. We're hurting everyone. It's a ripple effect. Yeah, and I, I remember you know, from, from doing news in Philadelphia for so many years and there were these suburban moms mm. who were these perfect Stepford wives, you yeah. know, looking women, and they were making meth in, in the one gal's basement. Right. And everybody said, what? Mm -hmm. they were, this, they, it blew everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, it's just, it's just another word for whatever that it is. It's, right. It could be alcohol, could be prescription meds, could be whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's amazing that you are coming out and talking about this, especially because for women, for, for married moms, and you've got yeah. the blonde perfect look and the perfect <sighs> family. And so I think for people to see that, they say, okay, it's okay for me to acknowledge what's going on in my Absolutely, life. Absolutely, because one of the things that I really wished I would have had is someone to talk to or someone to look for. When I spent that 21 days in rehab, I grabbed anything I could get my hands on to read. I wanted to read stories similar to mine, and I wanted to see how those women made it. And my husband and I are committed to erasing that stigma, that we want to talk about it. We have to talk about it because the only only way it's like it's almost like we've been called to action mm -hmm. the only way to get our message out is to share our story and in by doing that we're hoping that we can get others to share theirs and which, start that dialogue which is a beautiful story and and we're, we're gonna let that unfold and show uh, your appearance on the Oprah Winfrey Network yes. which was a pivotal moment in your life but Matt you know that moment when you get that call take me back to that moment when you get a call your wife and daughter have been in a horrible accident and then you learn what happened mm -hmm. the, the uh, it was it was a Sunday um, I had gone to uh, I'd gone I was working finish my master's degree so I had gone to my uh, my classroom to my computer to work on that and uh, Amy was taking the kids ice skating for the day so what could be more you know what could be more you know safe than a day of ice skating on a Sunday afternoon um, I had stopped to get a bite to eat on the way home and uh, my, my cell phone rang and it was a number that I don't didn't notice and normally I just well if I don't know the number then I don't bother answering it for whatever reason I did and it was a a lady's voice on the other end that 
basically said, is this Matt? Am I speaking with Matt? Uh, yes, it is. Um, are you married to Amy? And of course, I acknowledge. And she went on to say there's been a terrible accident and uh, you know, your family's been involved. It's, it's not good. Um, I started to think about the day. I get very, um, yeah. but just getting that phone call, um, you know, she, she had said things like there's a possibility they're going to bring in the helicopters and things like that for, I mean, how bad it was. So I've quickly found out where it was and I, I was about a 15 minute drive. So I started, you know, of course, crazily driving there as fast as I could thinking, you know, it's, it's three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Did a deer run out? You know, um, you know, it must have, did, did someone else cause this? And, and when I got to the accident scene, uh, you couldn't recognize the car. And I got there just in time for, uh, they were loading Amy in one ambulance and the kids in another. So they kind of shoved me in with the kids and it was a, it was a blur, of course. And uh, we're going to the emergency room and we get in there, of course, they're checking the children, checking her. They take her one place, I'm with the kids. Um, as things start to calm down a little bit and, and uh, they're concerned about Madison, our, our five-year-old at the time, and she's bleeding internally badly and they can't get it stopped. And um, still at this point, uh, alcohol never came into my head. I, I didn't know how it happened. That wasn't really important at the time. Um, probably about an hour into it, uh, a state, state police officer uh, pulled me aside and uh, wanted to ask me a few questions. So, you know, of course, my wife's name, social security number, birth date. I thought that's, I'd never been involved in an accident like this before. I thought it was normal. And so I was giving him the information and I felt bad saying this. In fact, I told him, I said, I, I really feel terrible asking this question, but we've had some issues with alcohol with her. Can you check her, her blood? And, we, and when his answer came back, that that's the reason we're here, is because of it. My world just, like what a punch in the gut. Uh, that's when I realized that, you know, she made that choice. To, uh, to put the kids in the car. It wasn't a deer and it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't someone else. And I just never thought that that could be a three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. And when he said, that's why we're here because it smelled, she, she smells like a brewery. Um, it went from concern to just I, I, the emotions of fear, anger, hatred. Um, this was enough. There had been throughout our book that we talk about, there was several episodes that have progressively got worse and worse and worse. Um, and then this was just, like I said, the final, the final blow where, you know, we don't, and at the same time, we don't know if my daughter's going to make it. Um, and how so. long was Madison in critical care in the hospital? She was in there a little over a week. Um, oh, and then she was sent home. They got the bleeding stopped. Um, but then she was out of school then. She was in kindergarten at the time. So she was, they had to have a, send a teacher uh, so she was not allowed to go to school for pretty much the rest of the year because if she had been bumped, you know, kids are bumping around on, you know, staircases mm -hmm. or playgrounds. If she had just bumped or fallen, in fact, she wasn't allowed to go upstairs to her room for about two months in case she would fall and, and re-rupture it. So. And I should point out that actually Madison's here in the studio yeah, she and she's yeah. a beautiful, healthy little girl <laughs> modeling, in fact. So how do you go from this point um, with Matt and Amy? How do you move forward from that when we come back? Matt and Amy's story, how they went from that low point in their lives of fear and worry, anger, to forgiveness when The Dawn Show continues.